So I want to talk to you briefly about what we call the oral Torah. So there's two parts, if you will, to the Torah. The written Torah that we discussed in several other videos, which is the five books of Moses, the books of the prophets, the book of the writings. We also have something that's equally as important, and we call it the oral Torah. Uh, in, in, in Judaism, in specifically religious Judaism, observant Judaism, it's a fundamental principle that both the written Torah and the oral Torah were given by God to Moses on Mount Sinai. So both of them are divine in origin, and both are equally as important. So the oral Torah comprises several different things, but it's primarily made up of two different books, if you will, or sections. The first one is called the Mishnah. The Mishnah is the interpretation of the laws and some of the sayings that are written down inside the written Torah. The Mishnah is divided up into six orders uh, and amongst those orders, they're sort of like chapters or, or um, overall he uh, headings or headlines. Underneath them are 63 different tractates uh, comprising every type of law, uh, area of law that you can imagine. Uh, everything from agriculture in the land of Israel to um, waking up in the morning to uh, clothes that we wear to relationships between husband and wife to um, the holidays, to the Sabbath, to keeping kosher, everything you can imagine that is the fundamental principles of Jewish life are to be found in the Mishnah. The Mishnah was initially given down orally by the rabbi, so from rabbi to rabbi to rabbi to rabbi, and to the students, until around the year 200 of the Common Era. Right around that time, um, the leader of Israel, who was named Rabbi Yehuda Hanasi, Rabbi Judah the Prince. Uh, we also just simply call him Rebbe, which is means my teacher. Rebbe saw that the people were changing. The nature of the individual was not to be able to recall the vast amount of information that was passed down from student to teacher for thousands of years before that, all the way back to Moses. So he decided he was going to compile the oral Torah in a written form. So that's why today we don't just have this as an oral tradition. We have this where you can actually buy the book, open the book, read it, and, and have it and refer back to it. So Rebbe Yehuda compiled the Mishnah based on the sayings and the debates of well over 120 scholars of the time. Um, and it is a rich texture covering literally every facet of life that you can imagine. So that's one section. The second section is called the Talmud. The Talmud is an even further explanation of the Mishnah. The Talmud comprises of, the, what, what happens in the Talmud is they cite the Mishnah, so you can actually see the entire Mishnah inside of the Talmud. And then there is something called the Gemara. The Gemara is the further interpretation and debates of the rabbis. You will see that the Talmud is much lengthier and much more in-depth than the Mishnah is. But it's completely based on the Mishnah. The Mishnah is the foundation of the Talmud. The Talmud also follows the same structure and organization of the Mishnah. It has um, 63 different tractates, and it is well over 6,200 pages long. So it is an incredible ocean of Jewish knowledge, um, can take a lifetime to, to master. There is a tradition in uh, Orthodox Judaism where we study one page of Talmud per day. One page, and every day we continue to increase our knowledge and read something new. And by doing this, we finished the entire Talmud in seven years. That's how big the Talmud is. Again, it covers everything from family purity, relationships between husbands and wives, divorce law, laws of the Sabbath, laws of a ritual slaughter of animals, um, keeping kosher, laws of the Sabbath and the holidays, uh, agricultural um, laws that apply in the land of Israel, everything you can imagine. The debates are often challenging to follow, but there are plenty of commentaries to the, Mish to the Mishnah and the Talmud, 
and they help to explain what's going on there. Uh, the Talmud, the Mishnah is primarily written in Hebrew with a little bit of the language of um, the time, which was called Aramaic. It's a combination, it's a, it's a riff, if you will, on Hebrew. Sounds similar, written similar, but it's a slightly different language. The Talmud is similar, much more Aramaic, but also primarily based in Hebrew. So not only do you have to learn the Hebrew, but you have to learn, if you're going to read it and study it in the original, you have to learn the Aramaic language and the grammar and the syntax of how the rabbis of the time argued and debated. Um, one story I want to relate about the beauty of the, of the Talmud. So you have all of these rabbis that are arguing back and forth about all sorts of topics. You, you know, in, it's almost a cliche to say that in Jewish law and Jewish thinking, there's never one topic. There's one question and like 10 opinions. So how do you know which one is, is right? And indeed, you find very vigorous debates inside the Talmud and the Mishnah, where this rabbi holds this and that rabbi holds that. And um, through later commentaries, we do come to a consensus as what we follow in today's Judaism. We still base our laws on the Mishnah and the Talmud. Uh, but there's one story that um, is related inside the Talmud that I think is gives you an idea of, of how you approach two sides of an argument. There are two famous schools back in those days. One was the school of Hillel, who was a sage, and, and it was his students as well. One was the school of Shammai. Shammai was um, sort of Hillel's contemporary and his rival. And they would debate, there are literally hundreds of debates between Hillel and Shammai during the course of the Mishnah and the Talmud. Now, most of the time, the very vast majority of the time, we follow, as far as the rulings, the, the words of the school of Hillel. It's complicated why, but, but suffice to say, for, the, for our purposes, that's what we do. We follow Hillel most of the time. Um, and in one debate, both schools took drastically opposite views of a particular subject, and the rabbis reported hearing a heavenly voice that said, Yes, the law is in accordance with Hillel. However, both these and those are words of the living God, meaning that both, um, even though they're diametrically opposed, both opinions are rooted in the Torah. And since they're rooted in the Torah, they are holy. Now, a couple of last little brief things about the oral Torah. It's not just the Mishnah and the Talmud. There are hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of commentaries through the ages that help to explain and bring new insights into these laws. But everything is based inside the Torah. We believe, in specifically Orthodox Jews believe, that the Mishnah and the Talmud and all of the oral traditions are just as important as what's written down inside the actual Torah itself. And you can't have one without the other. The Torah is the blueprint for the creation of the universe, for all of our lives, for how to live our lives and for everything that we might want to know. But in order to delve really deep and read between the lines, you have to do it with the two best tools we have, which is the Mishnah and the Talmud.